Hey, I'm Laura McKibb, and I'm here to teach you the Moonrise Earrings. So this is a design that I did as my holiday pattern back in 2019. It's a free pattern that you can download from the website. I will put a link in the show notes below. If you have a look down there, you can find the link to the PDF, which will allow you to print it out so you can have that while we work through them. Um, we're going to go through every step here in the video, um, but essentially we're going to be making the rectangular structure first. That's going to be the first step here. And then we're going to end up uh, doing the bezel and attaching it finally to create the earring structure. It's a combination of uh, both peyote stitch and herringbone stitch. So um, I hope you'll enjoy the project. Uh, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, before we get going, let's just go over the materials quickly. You're going to need size 11 Japanese cylinder beads, an A, a B, and a C color for those. The A and the B are used in this sort of rectangular structure that you see here, and the C are going to be used in the bezel, so that's where everything's going. You'll need 15 round Japanese seed beads. You're going to need an A and a B there. Um, you're also going to need some size 15 check charlottes. You're going to need some 1.5 to 2 millimeter pearls or something to substitute for that size. So I have here the 1.5 to 2 millimeter natural pearls, but you can also substitute 2 millimeter glass pearls and you can also use a size 11 round seed bead or even like a 15 Japanese charlotte. There's a lot of different things that you can use in place of those because they're being used for a bezel embellishment. If you look here, you can see where those are being used. So you can use all sorts of things for that. Um, you will also need need 39 SS Swarovski Rivoli's. You'll need two of those. Um, these are the eight millimeter size. So if you're looking at the uh, sizes in millimeters, uh, eight millimeter or 39 SS. You will also need French hook ear wires. So you need a pair of those or whatever earring finding you're going to use here. Two millimeter glass pearls. These are the Swarovski ones that I have here, but you can use check glass ones or whatever you like for those. Um, also four by seven millimeter drops. These are the Swarovski crystal drops. Um, it's article 6007 that I have here, but you can use a check drop or whatever you like. Any sort of drop is fine for this, um, this part as well. You're going to need two, one for each earring. So those are all the bits and pieces. Uh, let's get going. Okay, so let's get going. We are going to start off by making what is sort of the rectangular structure that you see here. And it is a combination of peyote stitch and herringbone to create the structure. It's, it's essentially two layers and then we zip it together along the outside edge to uh, create this really firm uh, rectangle. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to be using cylinder A and cylinder B and 15A and two millimeter glass pearls for this part. So I have everything laid out. But what I'm going to do on video, just because it's going to make it so much easier for you to see is I'm going to substitute in this black uh, cylinder here for what I was using originally as the cylinder A. If you look carefully at the original earring, the cylinder A is shiny silver and the cylinder B is matte silver. So they're basically the same color with different finishes, which makes it a little challenging to see on video. So I have, uh, just for the purpose of clarity, uh, substituted in the black for the cylinder A. So to start off, you need to string up um, or thread up about six feet of thread onto a size 12 needle. And then you're going to string up here. I have two cylinder A, five cylinder B, two cylinder A, 17 cylinder B, two cylinder A, five cylinder B, two cylinder A, and 17 cylinder Bs. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, pull these down, leave yourself about a 15 inch tail here because you are going to need a little bit of a tail um, later on. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass through this first bead here. So I'm passing through that first cylinder A just to make this a circle. And you can tie a knot if you prefer, but I tend to just go through that first bead because um, we want to be emerging between the first and second a bead there, the two, you know, between the two cylinder A's um, to start off. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a herringbone stitch in the corner, and you're going to have to put some tension on this thread here, on this tail thread, in order to keep things from pulling out. So um, I'm going to hold that with my one hand, and then I'm going to string up two cylinder A's and go through the second A there. So that's going to be a herringbone stitch that we're going to do. 
And again, it's going to take, you know, pulling to get it into place and it will loosen up, but you can go back and pull that tighter later on. But we have our two beads there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our cylinder Bs and we're going to peyote stitch along this edge. So I'm going to pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead, just like that. Again, pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And then I'm gonna pick up another one. And at this point, I'm gonna pick up a bead, skip a bead, and the bead I'm going through is that cylinder A. And that's at our second corner where you have these sets of two cylinder A's. These are gonna be the corners of the rectangle. So when I get there, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna pick up two cylinder A's and go through that second cylinder A. So whenever you hit those corners, you're gonna do a herringbone stitch. And then along the straightaways, you're just gonna do peyote stitch. So now I'm gonna switch back to my cylinder B and I'm gonna peyote stitch along this edge. And this is the long side of the uh, rectangle. So there'll be shorter sides and longer sides. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish this round. I'm not gonna make you watch this because it's a little, tedious. Um, and I'm just going to peyote stitch along the sections of cylinder B. And then again, at every corner, I'm going to add my two cylinder A's between the cylinder A's that are there um, to create a, uh, a herringbone stitch. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll do this now, and then I will be back when we get to the end of the round. There's a step up, which is quite important. So I want to make sure you see the step up. Okay, so here we are at the end of the round. We're going to pick up that last cylinder B, which I have on my needle here, and then we're going to go and step up. This is where that step up is. It's really important that you make sure you, you get the step up at the end of every round because if you miss a step up, what happens is you're going to have trouble zipping later on. So I'm going to pick up my, again, pick up my cylinder B and then go up through two cylinder A's in that first column of that first herringbone ladder. So make sure you get that in every time. I'm gonna pull this through. And again, my corner kind of loosens up a little bit because, um, you know, because the, there's not a knot there. But if I just pull on my tail thread and pull on my working thread, you can see I get that nice rectangular structure there. So I've got a good rectangle going. Now we're gonna start a second row of the same thing we did before. So we're gonna pick up our two cylinder A's, got our two cylinder A's. We're just gonna go through that second bead in that set of two. So it's a herringbone stitch. There we go, pop those guys into place. And now we're gonna go back to our cylinder B's and we're gonna peyote stitch between the herringbone ladders with our cylinder Bs. So we're just gonna peyote stitch. And what you find is each each round um, here on out, there's gonna be an extra spot for a peyote stitch along the edge here. So this time we're gonna have four spots to peyote stitch in So um, before I get to the next corner. And that'll just increase by one with every round you'll find. So I have three. And one more here, four, and that brings us back to that corner again. Now we're back to the next corner and we're ready to do a herringbone stitch with our cylinder A's. So here we go, we're gonna pick up our two cylinder A's and we're gonna go through the second one in the corner there. Then I'm gonna resume my peyote stitch along the edge and we'll do this all the way around. So it's just essentially the same thing we did before, but there is that extra spot for peyote along each of those, those sides. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do this. When I get to the end and we have that step up, I'm gonna come back again just to make sure that part is clear to you. Okay, so at this point, I'm at the end of my round. I have one last cylinder B to put on there. So I have that strung up. And now what I'm gonna do is I am going to do my step up. So again, just like at the end of every round, we're gonna step up through two beads there on the, on the corner in that first herringbone ladder there. So I wanna make sure I step up through both of those just like that. And I'm gonna pull everything through pop that into place. So they should just pop right into place for you. So now what we're going to do is one more round like this for this layer. Um, now we'll finish this, this one layer and then we're going to build a second layer. But again, this is going to be the same thing where you're adding your two cylinder A's. Got your two cylinder A's on there. Do your herringbone stitch. 
And then we're going to switch over to peyote stitch and we're going to stitch along the straightaways with our cylinder Bs here. So let me grab a cylinder B and we'll just peyote stitch along those edges like that. So I'm going to go ahead again. I will finish this round. I'll come back for our step up so we make sure we don't miss out on that. And then we will um, move on to the second layer. Okay, so we are up to that last stitch here. I have my cylinder B on and ready to go. And we're gonna do what we've been doing all along where we're gonna do our little step up here through the two beads on the corner, just like that. That finishes this round and it also finishes this layer. So we're gonna now build a second layer. And what we need to do is we need to get back down to the inside edge in order to do this. So let me show you how that's gonna work. We are gonna take our thread here, there's our, my working thread, and I'm gonna travel diagonally down through that second column in that herringbone ladder. So you can see I've just gone diagonally down through there. And what we wanna do is we actually wanna weave across here so that we're coming out of this last cylinder B along this edge, because we wanna start in a corner. Um, the reason for doing this is that will, that will mean that your step up is always gonna be in that corner. But if we don't start in a corner, if we start along a straightaway, you can do that, but it's gonna be a moving step up. So if you take the time to kind of come over to this corner, that's gonna make it a little easier for you um, going forward. So there we are, we're over here. Now we're coming out of that last cylinder B along this edge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up two cylinder A's and we're gonna do a herringbone stitch here. So pick up our two cylinder A's and now we're gonna go through the first cylinder B along this edge. You can see where my needle's coming out there. So that's gonna be our herringbone stitch there on the corner. And now we are gonna switch over to our cylinder B's and we're gonna peyote stitch down this inside edge here. So we're gonna work all the way along this inside edge. Initially, it's not really gonna fold over so much. It's just gonna kind of stand up. But as you do more rows here, you're gonna find that it actually folds over and creates a second layer. So this is sort of the same thing we've been doing on that first layer. We're gonna continue peyote stitching down here, herringbone stitch in the corner. Again, you'll be coming out of this last cylinder B here. Pick up your two cylinder A's and go through the first cylinder B there to do your herringbone stitch. Peyote, herringbone, peyote, herringbone, peyote. And then we're gonna get back to where the step up is. So at that point, I'm gonna come back and just show you that step up. Okay, so I'm back around and up to my last stitch here in this round. So I have my cylinder B on here on my needle and I'm gonna do the step up just like we've been doing all along. And this step up is gonna be through, you can see it's through a cylinder B and a cylinder A there. So that first one is gonna be through the two different colored beads. And we're gonna pull everything into place. And this little guy is caught up. Let's fix that, okay, there we go, and that's all set. So at this point, you have one round, we're gonna do some more rounds, um, but before you go much further, and you could have done this prior to this round or at this round, take your tail thread and weave it to the outside edge here. You can see it's on the outside edge. Um, you wanna do that and just take a little half hitch to hold everything tight. Um, you'll use it later on, but this way you can kind of get it out of your way and make sure it's not wedged you know, between the two layers as you're building those. So. So let's go forward and do another round. We're gonna pick up again our two cylinder A's in the corner and go through that second one in the herringbone ladder. And then we're gonna, just like before, we're gonna switch over to our peyote stitch with the cylinder B's. So you're probably at this point getting, getting the hang of it. Um, you'll find as you work this round here, I think you'll see, um, you can kind of like nudge over the edge here, kind of force it over, and that will create this second layer. So it really will start to form as a second layer over the first. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this, and when I get to the end, I will be back, and of course, we will do our step up. Okay, so we are winding up this round, have our last cylinder B on the needle there, and again, step up through the two beads in that first column of that herringbone ladder. So there's my step up, so do not miss that, it is very important. And again, another round, it's gonna be just more of the same thing where we're gonna be adding our two cylinder A's in the corners as a herringbone stitch guy through there 
And then peyote stitching straight along the edges uh, with the cylinder bees, just like we did before. So again, I'm going to go off. I will finish this round and then I will be back again, step up. And after this, we only have um, an, one more round to kind of equal out these layers. And then there is a very final zip round that's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we are up to the last bead in this round. I have it on there, my cylinder B. Again, as always, our step up through two beads there. We got that. And now we have one more round like this to go. There is actually going to be an additional round after that that's going to be a little bit different. But we got one more of these rounds with the herringbone stitches in the corners and the peyote stitch along the straightaways. So we're going to do this next round. And then, of course, I will come back and um, I'm going to show you the step up and then kind of finishing it off because we're going to do a finishing round. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I will do this and I will be back in a moment. Okay, end of the round, last cylinder B. We're gonna do our step up as we've been doing all along. So that will finish this round here. And at this point, you can probably see, pop that little guy in there, that both layers are the same there. So they won't zip up actually. If we tried to zip it up, they don't, you know, they match, so they won't zip up. So we actually need to add in one more round here in order to be able to do that zipping. And this last round is gonna be a little bit different. So instead of using cylinder beads, we're actually gonna be using 15 A's and then the two millimeter glass pearls on the corners. So let me show you. Um, we're starting off coming out the first bead in one of the herringbone ladders as we have been with each round. And what you're gonna do is take one of your two millimeter pearls and just go through the next bead. So it's like, it's almost like a herringbone stitch, but you're only adding one bead rather than two. And that bead is a two millimeter glass pearl. So there's that, got that in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peyote stitch along the edge here, but unlike before, when I was using the cylinders, I'm gonna use the 15 A's instead. So if you have a look here, I'm gonna pick up my 15 A and just peyote stitch along this edge here. All the way along. And then when I get to that next corner, again, I'm gonna do that two millimeter glass pearl, just as I had on the first, and then switch back to my 15 A's for my peyote stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do this round, and then I'll come back just to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I am up to that last stitch. I have my 15A on here. This is my very last 15A. And again, I'm gonna have a step up. It's gonna go through that cylinder bead. And then I wanna go through that glass pearl as well so that my thread is emerging from that glass pearl. So I'm gonna go through there as well. And that'll finish off this round. Now we're not gonna zip up yet. Um, we will zip up later, but we're gonna, uh, first we're gonna bezel the stone and we're gonna attach that stone to the uh, rectangle, you know, rectangular structure here before we go ahead and zip everything. It just makes life a lot easier if we do it that way. So I am going to clean up my mat. I'm gonna reorganize my beads so that we have what we need for the bezel and I will be back in a moment. Okay, so the next step in making these earrings is going to be to bezel the stone that you see on there. And uh, we're going to do that using cylinder C, 15B, and some Czech Charlotte. So I have those all laid out here. Now, as far as the amount of thread you want, you really don't need that much because it's a pretty small bezel. So a couple feet will be fine. Uh, put it on a size 13 needle because you will need size 13 needle for this with the Czech Charlottes. And uh, string up 22 beads here. So 22 cylinder C. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie a knot. You could also just go through a couple of beads if you want to make a, a circle, but I'm gonna tie a knot. Um, I like to tie square knot when I do bezel. Uh, so right over left, left over right. And a little tip I can give you, you'll notice actually I'm doing this right now, is I tend to sort of tighten up my knot high up like that and then pull it down which helps keep the beads from getting caught up in the knot it only works with fire line if you're using a nylon thread it'll seize up a little bit but if you have fire line uh, you can do that and then just pull it down and then go through a couple of beads so that you're coming out of a bead ready to get started. So what we're going to do here is we're going to peyote stitch this bezel. We're going to use cylinder C for the first row. So I'm going to pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. So it's just regular peyote stitch. 
just like this. And I'm just going to continue all the way around with this. It um, goes pretty quickly because it's a pretty small bezel. But um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to come back because there's a step up in, in the um, bezel here. So I want to make sure that you, you can see that. So go, go ahead and do this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I am up to adding my last bead in this round. I have my cylinder bead on there, and we're going to skip a bead, go through a bead, and then stepping up uh, requires going through one more bead. And now if you have a look, you can see I could kind of step up this way to the outside, or I could step up this way to the inside. And um, I find that, that for these smaller bezels, it's better if you can step up to the inside like this. So you pick up your bead, skip a bead, go through a bead, and step up to the inside just like that. I'll pull that tight. So it's already sort of cupping in because we've stepped to the inside here, um, but we got our little bezel going. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a round of peyote stitch, but we're going to use our 15 Bs this time because they're a little bit smaller and they'll help to pull this in even more. So I'm just going to stitch one round of peyote with the 15 Bs and then I will be back and we got one more round after this to go. Okay, so I'm down to my last 15B here, which I have on my needle. So I'm gonna pass through the cylinder and step up again to the inside there with my, my needle. And we're gonna do another round here, but this time we're gonna use our 15 check Charlottes. So these guys are even tinier, so they really help to pull this in nice and tight because we need this to, to hold the stone. We don't want the stone popping through the back. So we're just gonna peyote stitch a round of check Charlottes and that will finish off this side. This is gonna be the back side of the bezel. So I'm gonna go ahead, I will finish this round and then I will be back to talk to you about setting that stone in there. Okay, that finishes our row of check charlottes there. And now we're ready to set the stone in place and we're gonna bezel the front side um, to keep it, you know, hold it all secure. So uh, what I need to do is I need to get my thread, which is back over here to the other side uh, in order to do my bezeling. And I'm gonna show you just a little uh, a little trick real quickly. Um, if you notice, my thread is traveling in a counterclockwise direction, which is the way I kinda, well today I like working that way. I kinda change it up sometimes. I go the other way, but today is a counterclockwise kind of day. So in order to continue counterclockwise on the other side, if I were to just travel diagonally through the beads, I'd end up being like, I'd end up going clockwise when I get to the other side. But if instead you take your thread here and you go through the bead next to it, and then I'm going to go diagonally through one more there, what happens is when I flip everything over, I'll still be going counterclockwise. So that's a little, just a little trick that I can show you when you're, when you're bezeling stones there. So there we go. Now we're ready to set our stone in there. It's so cute and tiny. Um, and we're going to, we're going to support the back side of the bezel with our fingers like that, and then use our thumb to kind of hold that stone in place while we bezel. And on this side, what we're going to do is we're going to do one round of peyote with the 15 B's. And as you put each one on, I want you to kind of pull so that this comes up and over the stone because this is what's going to hold it in place is these couple rounds that we're doing now. So as you add each bead, of course the stone will keep popping out. That's why you have to hold it in place. But as you add each bead, pull in so that it kind of comes in and holds that stone down. Um, you're going to do this one round with the 15 Bs, so we'll do the first, and then you're going to step up and do a second round with 15 check Charlottes. And I think you'll find it's not until you get those 15 check Charlottes in place that everything will hold tight. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do that, my round of 15 B, my round of check Charlottes, and then I'll be back and we can talk about attaching this to the rectangular structure. Okay, so I have just finished off that round, um, and I like to take a little half hitch at the end of the round. So that just entails kind of dipping in there, passing your needle under the, the thread, and then I'm going to pull this through until I have just a tiny little loop there, pass through that loop, and tighten it up. And what that does is it just kind of holds everything tight. You want to make sure when you pull this down that it doesn't catch over a bead and it's in between the beads, but that holds everything tight for you. And, uh, and then, um, it won't loosen up later on on you. So now we are ready to attach this to our, uh, rectangle. And what we want to do first is make sure our thread 
is in the right spot. So I'm going to weave through the bezel and what I want to do is be coming out one of the cylinders in the bottom row of cylinders. So that's the row closest to the back side of the stone. So that's where I need to be to do this. Okay, now we need to attach this to our rectangle. Um, and it's important to make sure you're attaching it in the right place. So let me point that out before we actually go ahead and attach it because it's a little bit easier to see before I have the stone sitting on there. So you're gonna be passing through one of these cylinders here coming out of, you know, we're coming out of the bottom row of cylinders in the bezel. We're going to pass through a cylinder in here and then back into the next bead in that bezel row. So in order to find the bead, the easiest way I think is to do this. You're going to count up those 15s along the outside edge. So we're going to count up one, two, three. There's this cylinder bead that's between the third and the fourth. So look for that guy and then go in one. And that one there that's in one from the edge is going to be the one you need to pass through. So again, one, two, three of the 15s look for that cylinder along the edge and go in one to attach. So I'm gonna grab my stone and my rectangle and again, my count, one, two, three along the edge, look for that cylinder and then going in one from there. So I'm going to take my needle here, pass through the relevant bead and then we want to go back into, it's gonna be the next bead in the bezel row there. So that's the bottom most row of cylinders in the bezel and pull that down. You can see that's gonna sit in place. Now we wanna attach it on the opposite side as well. And the way we find that spot is you're gonna pass through, you're gonna kind of zigzag through 10 beads. So not including the one we're already through there. We're gonna go through 10 more beads and you just wanna zigzag back and forth through 10. Okay, so that puts me in the right spot there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass through the corresponding bead on this side as well. So again, I'm gonna count up one, two, three. There's that cylinder in one from there. So I wanna make sure I go through the right bead on this side as well. That's gonna be to attach this little guy here. And again, through the next bead in the bottom row on the bezel. I wanna make sure we're through the right bead there too. Pull that tight. And we're going to come up one row in our bezel, which will bring us up to the middle row of cylinder beads in the bezel. And we are going to add some Charlotte embellishments here. So we're just going to do little picots of check Charlottes all the way around. So pick up your three check Charlottes, go through the next bead in that row in the bezel all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this. And when I have finished this row, I'm going to come back and show you what's next. Okay, those check charlottes are in place, and now we are going to do one last round of surface embellishment on this bezel. So we want first to make sure that we're coming out of a cylinder bead in the top row of cylinders. So I'm going to step up one row from where we added the charlottes, and now we're going to use these 1.5 to 2 millimeter freshwater pearls here. Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning, you can use a 15 round, or you can use a, a glass pearl, a 2 millimeter glass pearl, whatever you like for this part, but I kind of of like using these little natural pearls if I can find them. They're a bit tricky to find. But you're just going to peyote stitch these in all the way around. So pick up one, go through that next bead in the bezel row. And I'm just going to work my way all the way around, adding one of these between every bead in that round. And when I'm all done, I'm just going to half hitch a couple of times to get rid of the thread. And then I'll cut that off and I'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about the next step. Okay, at this point, all of these pearls have been attached and I have woven off that thread. And what I've done is I've gone back to my tail thread that was on my rectangle. Um, this was from way back when, when we started that rectangle, there was a tail thread and I've put a size 13 needle on there. And now I need to weave over, we're gonna suspend a little drop in here. So you need to make sure you're in the right bead to start. Um, there's two cylinders here and these are what we're gonna be using to um, to attach this drop here. And there's actually um, a, a good diagram in the instructions. It's figure 25 where you can see where those beads are, but another easy way to find them is to go up here to your edge and count one, two, three fifteens along the edge and then count in one, two. And that second cylinder there is going to be where you want to start off. We're going to thread everything up and then we're going to come back and go through that next cylinder over here in that same row of peyote. So 
I'm going to grab my needle here. We're going to start off with a 1.5 to 2 millimeter pearl and four check charlottes. So one, two, three, four of our check charlottes. We're going to pick up one of our drop beads and four more check charlottes. There we go. And we're going to slide everything down like this and go back through that 1.5 to 2 millimeter pearl that we have on there. So go through him, pull everything tight, and we want to go through that second cylinder that I pointed out to you. Just like that. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get through. It's getting a little tight in there. But there we go, we made it. And now what you want to do is you want to weave up. We're going to weave kind of around whatever thread path you have to take is fine. But we want to come up here and we want to be coming out one of these. There's sort of two 15s on the inside here because we're going to be adding the loop between those two. So we want to weave up and count over one, two, three and be coming out that third one ready to add the loop, which is what we're going to use to attach the ear wire. So um, I'm going to weave that. We're going to leave that off and then we're going to go back to our working thread over here and we're going to use it to zip. So I'll be back in a moment so we can do that. Okay, so I have my thread here ready to go for our loop later on. We're going to set that aside for the moment and we are going to zip. So going back to that working thread that's on the outside edge of your rectangle, we are going to, we're coming out of a pearl there. I'm going to go through the cylinder bead and we're just going to zip back and forth between, it's going to be between cylinders and these 15s that we added here in that last row on the top layer. So I'm just going to go back and forth zipping all the way along, just all the way along this edge. So um, I'm gonna continue down when I get to the next corner. I'm gonna come back. I just wanna show you the corners cause they're, um, they're a little bit funky. So I'll, um, I'll be back in a mo moment. Okay, I am down here to the corner, and right now I'm coming out of this, this cylinder bead right here on the corner. You can see I'm coming out there. So all I'm going to do on corners is I will just then pass through the pearl, so pass through the pearl, and go through this cylinder bead here, also on the back side through there and uh, that will kind of zip the corners together and then I'll just resume my my zipping with the peyote stitch along the edge so it's really easy once you know what you're doing there on the corners so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna finish all the way around and I will weave off this thread I'll half hitch a couple of times um, change directions it is a bit tight kind of can be difficult to half hitch so if you're having trouble with that if you just change directions a couple times in the peyote that will lock it in place so I'm gonna go ahead I'll do that and I'll come back and show you adding the loop. Okay, so we are in the final stretch. It has been zipped all the way around, so all the edges are zipped. And the last thing we got to do is put that loop on that we're going to be attaching the ear wire to. So I'm going to string up just seven of these little check charlottes here, slide those guys down, and I should be coming out the right bead. We left off coming out the third 15 along the edge there. So I have my beads strung up and all I need to do is go through that next 15 along the outside edge. Now this can be a little bit tricky. You might have to kind of wiggle a little bit to get your, your uh, needle through. Um, but if you mess around a little bit, you should be all right to do it. And that attaches that like that. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to weave off this thread um, and get rid of that entirely. And then I'll come back and we'll just, we'll just go over uh, putting that ear wire on. Okay, so the very final step is just going to be to take one of these French hook ear wires, feed that through your loop, and using a pair of pliers, you can just kind of squeeze that closed so that it stays on there. there go, just like that. Okay, so that finishes that up. So, same thing a second time and I'll give you a pair there so they'll look like that when they're done if you if you stick with again you know I, I used the black in the demo just so you could see the corners but um but in this one I've used the matte and shiny version so I hope you enjoy the project it is a fun one thanks for joining me today for the moonrise earrings be well stay safe and eat on